Hi folks, I'm Jonathan Wilson and uh, we're doing another V-Blog edition of On The Score and today I'm over at uh, Kevin Kiner's studio. Kevin? How you doing now? Great, how are you? I'm well. Well thanks for having me over first of all for your time and um, just wanted to uh, give everybody out there sort of a, a peek at what uh, goes on behind the scenes and of course uh, ways that you have utilized the guitar viol and some other inst instruments you have around here. We can have a little fun with that. Yeah. So anyway, did you have anything you'd like to show us uh, off the bat? Or? I've got tons of stuff. Okay. Uh, first of all, I, th I think it's worthwhile explaining that, um, and, and I'm sure you've sold so many of your instruments to film composers, and, and I think one of the reasons is we're all looking for something different. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, you know, as a film composer, I'm always, you know, banging on pots or cups or six-string guitar viols with frets on them and, and things like that. I don't bang on that too much. Um, this instrument here um, was, I, I think you were kind of reluctant to let it go because it was the prototype. And I, do you still have on the website... Um, Old Faithful clips and oh, somewhere. Stuff. I mean, I'm sure there's uh, some old YouTubes of when. Um, and just to explain, there was actually one uh, particular video of Old Faithful, and for those of you watching, this is Old Faithful. Um, and uh, originally, it had a it had a different top, and it's it's got quite a history to it. Uh, one time, it actually was uh, damaged in in transit coming back from. Uh, um, editor of Guitar Player Magazine, uh, and at the time it had more of a flat top, it had some funny looking other sound holes on it, and um, so anyway it got rebuilt, and then I wasn't, I was never really happy with, completely with the top design, and I was starting to really study up on, you know, how old violins and cellos were built, and uh, so this was actually the very first top of its kind, now it's very typical looking of most of the tops I'm doing these days. Um, and this happened to be the, the first top of its type, and, well, I don't know, I think uh, it, Kevin had a liking to this one. Yeah, I just, uh, somehow I gravitated to it. You had several others, um, and I just got stuck with this one. In fact, I, I've been to your place a couple times, and as you know, um, the new ones you're making, I think, are fantastic. Um, I don't think this sounds better than the new ones you're making, but it sounds different. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I've just sort of gravitated towards. Um, so I just, you know, it, it, being a prototype, it 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 has its flaws, and, and I think that's probably one of the reasons you were relu reluctant to get rid of it because, mm -hmm. you know, you you were just doing it for yourself. But anyhow, I like it a lot. Um, so, so one of the things that um, I score several uh, television shows, and, and uh, the one I've been using this the most on is, uh, well, I use it a bit on CSI Miami, mm -hmm. and usually it's quite processed on that show, yeah. but I, I, uh, I picked up a new show for AMC called Hell on Wheels, and um, they really wanted a very unusual earthiness mm -hmm. with this show. Um, and I, I do occasionally use a cello player, and occasionally I use a violinist, but most of the time I, I use this instrument instead, and it just sounds a little different. Mm -hmm. and, and it really... Um, uh, so I, I'm going to play one, one thing. This is a scene, this is uh, from the ending of the pilot episode. Okay. And it's a, it's a big long soliloquy that uh, one of the characters is giving. It's, it's a beautifully written dialogue about the zebra and the lion. And, and, and so I, I started it off with, with something different. I just uh, started with pizzicato. I'm just kind of doing this. I put a little delay on it. And, and the cool thing about the guitar viol, when you play pizza, I think on a cello it's going to be a little more like... I, I can't really do it, but it's a little shorter, mm -hmm. a little more plucked sounding, and there's I think there's better sustain on the guitar viol. So here's what that track sounded like. I'll just play, I'll solo that. You hear the echo. So I did that. 
And then I did an octave up, I think. Yeah. So I did some movement. Like that. Yeah. And so we'll listen to how those two play together. about this show is that I'm, I'm not afraid to be very sparse like that. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's kind of cool to be really sparse like that. So this instrument really shines in this show because uh, there's another cue I'll play you later mm -hmm. that's just a banjo and then the guitar viol playing kind of a harmony, a lower harmony right. below it. You know, so it's very, everything's very exposed in Hell on Wheels. Sort of that yeah. rustic fiddle sound in, to it. In a way. Well. Yeah, yeah, but the great thing is it's not a fiddle. Yeah. You know, to me, that's what's awesome about this instrument is it's not a fiddle, and it's like, I, I don't know that people consciously go, oh, what is that instrument? It's weird. I'm, I'm, they're probably paying attention to the dialogue. But, you know, I, I'm, in, in doing it, I, th I think it's just nice to have an unusual instrument. And here's another illustration of, of something that you'll hear at the beginning of this, this cue. And this is called a, a tambour. Uh, it's from Turkey, and it has three strings that are double coarse, so there's six strings. And I bow that quite a lot in the show. So I kind of do this. And again, this is an instrument where you might say, well, what the heck is that? It's not a banjo or whatever, but it, it does hearken to a kind of an earthy western sound, and it, and it works in the western. So let me play uh, those tracks, and you can kind of see what it sounds like. So there it is. There's the tambour. Now that's the cello playing the lead. Mm -hmm. You're catching the video, but this guy, he's delivering his soliloquy. And this, this plays for about two minutes, I think, in, in the uh, pilot episode. So, that's that one. And in just a second, I, I have to boot it up, but I'll show you a different cue, okay? So, okay, super. So this next cue is, um, the train is pulling up with black powder. And I'll play you a little bit of the, which is gunpowder. I'll play you a little bit of the cue and then I'll show you the different instruments I used on it. But it's got a bit of an ominous vibe to it. that or I'll just solo some of the instruments. First of all, I'm using that tambour again and I'll just play that for you. I'm strumming it this time. There it is. Which is cool. It's tuned in fifths so you can play smoke on the water also if you want to on that instrument. And then I have, uh, the next thing I have is uh, Amanda Cello which is this guy right here, it's tuned uh, just like a cello, um, but it's double string like a mandolin. So here's what that sounds like. So it, 
kind of sounds like a guitar, but it's lower, obviously, almost a baritone guitar, and the double core strings. And then we have the guitar viol here, and it's playing kind of a haunting melody. Sometimes I use vibrato. I think in the beginning of that I didn't you can get different emotions out of it. Um, I'm still personally, because I'm a guitarist, I'm sort of used to this kind of vibrato. But I can't seem to make it work on the, right. on, on the guitar viol, so I've been working on my cello vibrato, and it's, it's coming along, but uh, you need to practice a lot, you know how it is? <laughs> <laughs> uh, another thing I wanted to show you is that I filtered it, so I use this um, low-pass filter. What uh, plug-in is that? Is it? It's called Fab Filter. That's the company. It's called Volcano Two. Okay. It's a fantastic uh, filter, and this is what it sounds like filtered. I think it's a little more haunting filter. And I'll just uh, bypass it. You'll see what it sounds like without the filter. Sometimes you just want to lo-fi things, you know, just yeah. to kind of, because the cue, I think. It kind of, kind of puts it back because the, the uh, manticello is already really bright and everything like that. And so, you know, it gives it a different sound. So this is um, the final cue in episode four of Hell on Wheels, and as you see, creatively there's there's, there's uh, on in picture there's lots of carnage. Everything's exploded. People's uh, bones are showing, and there's blood everywhere. And so we kind of wanted to go against that, and we started off with the charango, which, if you follow me, I will show you. <clears throat> it's a very interesting instrument. And, uh, and as you can see, it's made out of an armadillo. Yeah. And it's uh, 10 strings, double course. So, we started with the charango. That kind of set us up to go against the grain of all the blood and guts. I made it pretty. And then I started bringing in this, uh, the guitar viol, playing several different parts. Here's one of them. And here's the second one, which is a fifth up. After that, I kind of started just jamming. Thank you. 
things. Here, I'll solo it for you. Um, I may be not as clean and perfect, but sort of that's kind of cool, <laughs> fortunately for me, <laughs> because there's a rawness to it. So uh, here I'm just kind of improvising. <laughs> So, and there's, you know, obviously tons of echo, which kind of gives it the spookiness and uh, covers up some of my mistakes. What type of a reverb is that? Is that plug, uh, plug in a lexicon or something? Yeah, it's or? the Lexiverb, which okay. is a plug in. And then I have uh, Echo Boy on it, which is a Sound Toys plug in. And once again, I have the Fab filter on it, which is the low pass filter. Way cool. Um, but I, you know, as I was saying, I use this instrument. I, I, I use the guitar viol tremendously um, in in this show. You know, and sometimes you can even just, you know, like I said, there's so much more sustain on on this when you play pizzicato than there would be on a cello or something like that. So you can just use it that way. Um, and you and I were speaking earlier about. All the different film composers mm -hmm. have all sort of found their own way of using this instrument, haven't mm -hmm. they? Oh, absolutely. Um, and as I was telling you, like on CSI in Miami, I also have an electric, one of your first electrics, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I use that on CSI Miami instead of maybe an Ebo or something. A lot of people use Ebo these days. Um, and I use that completely differently than I use this one. Yeah. Um, and I, you know I'm experimenting now because you gave me this, this little jack where I can uh, plug it in. I'm, I'm about to do a cue for a, a new project and uh, I've loaned my uh, electric out to someone so I don't have it. So, so I'm going to use this one but I'm going to process it a lot. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what that's going to sound like but I bet it'll sound good once I get it happening. Well you know uh, one of the things that I like doing uh, myself too is uh, I will not only take the DI, but also the mic sound, and then yeah. make two different sounds, and then maybe pan them, get creative with, with effects. Right. And um, that can have a pretty good effect on things. Yep. Um, we sort of tried that for a bit. Um, I've been using a stereo mic on, on this show, um, so mm -hmm. the DI didn't, didn't kind of fit in with the, right. the stereo mic very well. I have an old uh, Neumann SM69 which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and one of, the, one of the cool things I, I'm able to do now on this show is, uh, is go into my live room and have it mic'd really well. And, uh, and I control logic from my iPad, which I'll show you in the next scene. So there I don't, because I, I very frequently work odd hours. I'll be working at 5 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning a lot. And... Uh, or, and um, I don't think my engineer gets up that early. So <laughs> so we kind of mic things up and get it all set, and we have all our preamps working. Yeah. And then I come in, and I'll sit down in the live room, and I can uh, record a bunch of different tracks um, and control everything from the iPad while I'm, while I'm playing this. And so kind of got the old school acoustic with the new school iPad going on here. Wow, very cool. So these are some of the weird instruments I have. Uh, that's from Africa and that's called a Kora, a K O R A. And you sort of play it like a harp, both hands. Um, and then up there is a Don Grosh Strat, which is the first thing, and a baritone guitar, and a bazooki, and a chumbash from Turkey. And that's a 1952 L7 Gibson. An Ibanez bass and ES335 and here's my that strat there is a strat I got in junior high so unfortunately it's just post CVS a white falcon and a, a Yamaha bass uh, here we have a oud from Egypt this is a Tahitian ukulele and they all have the same I think they use fishing line <laughs> I'm not sure they're all the same size strings this here is the first guitar I ever had when I was about seven years old. 
And it's amazing I still play guitar because that thing's impossible to play. It's one of those drugstore guitars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then this is a Cordoba, beautiful Spanish guitar from Spain. Another Don Grosh carved top with a knurly maple. Nice. This is, again, from my youth. It's a 12 string, which no longer is a 12 string. There's an Alvarez, a uh, really nice mellow uh, acoustic guitar. Uh, another Gretsch. And uh, my Dobro. Another uh, nylon string guitar. Washburn is actually very inexpensive, but it sounds beautiful. Um, I had this modified, this Tele, uh, it's got some electronic boost in it. It's a very hot guitar, so. It's good for distortion. And then my Paul Reed Smith, which is an extremely versatile guitar. Um, and here's the banjo I use. And I, I was using one with a resonator, but this one just kind of sounds hipper for uh, for Hell on Wheels for some reason. And then I have a R. Taylor, which is just a gorgeous, gorgeous acoustic. Sweet. And then the stick. I don't know what. A little stroma, stroma stick. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then uh, there's a uh, ukulele from Hawaii. It's a um, a real Hawaiian one made out of coal wood. Lanakai, yeah. And uh, the Chirango. The we Chirango, just saw. yeah. And my grandfather's mandolin that he plays. That's a Martin. It is. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And looks like over here we have some sort of a cigar box guitar. Yeah. Which, by the way, this is just a little piece of trivia. Everybody, most people associate me with the guitar viol, but in fact, the very first instrument I ever built as a kid in sixth grade was a cigar box guitar. And I had no idea that they existed. Really? I just saw a piece of, I saw a cigar box, saw a little, you know, piece of wood and had a, a school assignment to build a real musical instrument. In fact, the bridge was a pencil. I broke a pencil and I used it for the bridge. And, yeah. You know, so there you have it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's, we all start somewhere, huh? And yeah. You didn't even know. So I, I was going to kind of show you uh, how I how I record. So this is my live room, and uh, this program here will run Logic from my iPad, so I can hit play. And. Then I can record enable tracks if I want to there and uh, pretty much do a lot of the things I can do on the computer so I'll sit here like this and uh, this is a stereo mic it was a SM69 I was telling you about part of it it's sort of facing sort of the way your ears would if that were your head then your ears would be like this so it's giving you a stereo signal and then I'll hit record. And uh, I probably hit record a lot because mm -hmm. I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> uh, but through the miracle of copying and pasting and uh, all the great things you can do now, I get a take that sounds okay. State of the art. Yeah, <clears throat> it's state of the art, but it's acoustic, and everything everything I do on Hell on Wheels, there's no there are no synths. I play. Um, in fact, if you go down there to that bucket, I play that with mallets. Um, sounds pretty cool if you throw a mallet on it. Here, I'm gonna try playing it with my hands. I haven't played any buckets recently. Yeah, it's kind of. So play that along with uh, maybe my uh, one of my buffalo drums or my uh, Native American drum back there. And it kind of has a cool or oil secret can. selection from Lowe's or Home Depot. <laughs> I think this is from Target. I'm not Target. Sure. It's a Target. <laughs> yeah, and it was uh, fourteen dollars. So which uh, which one. also <clears throat> I mean it it exemplifies the the idea and the concept that you don't really you're not after canned stock sounds out of libraries yeah. you need something that really is is very real and different yeah 
Well, very cool. Kevin, thank you so much for doing this and um, having me by. And I know you've got a pretty slam schedule. And um, anyway. I'd like to also thank you, Jonathan, for inventing or uh, furthering the invention of a marvelous instrument. I'm, I'm having a great time with it. Uh, I curse it sometimes, and you, <laughs> but but then I practice some more, and then I'm I'm pretty happy. I think it's a marvelous instrument, and it's really done a lot for for uh, for my sound. Well, I've heard it said that if it wasn't so damn, it would be frustrating if it wasn't so damn fun. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's good. <laughs>